Good morning and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is circles of connection. So um, I just, I spent the weekend at a mushroom festival, which was amazing. And um, it was very interesting to me and notable to see that I kept intersecting with the same people over and over, like that there were certain people. Good morning, good morning, Rosalyn. Welcome. So good to have you here with us this morning. Uh, we're talking about circles of connection. And I thought it was so interesting that in the last day that I was there, I was seeing people that I hadn't seen all weekend that I hadn't met. Um, at all but <clears throat> through the whole weekend i kept re-encountering people that i had met i was really really interesting so uh we're going to talk about circles of connection and explore what that means or what it could be uh, but before we get started let's take a minute or two to get present so let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it and imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your molecules, all your cells, all your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's rub our hands together vigorously so that you can feel that wonderful sensation of your palm on palm and all that friction and then as you stop rubbing your hands together feel that tingling and tickling and allow all these sensations to bring you present right here right now to this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Jenny. So good to have you here with us this morning. So yeah, I spent the weekend at uh, an event called MycoFest, which was a mushroom festival. And um, we went, I, I went on a foray. They had a number of different forays scheduled to be able to go and, and forage for mushrooms, discover them. Uh, through the woods and um, there was an idea good morning good morning Dido I'm presuming that's Dido welcome it's great to have you here with us this morning um, so uh, good morning Bernadette everybody's piling in it's so good to have you here with us Bernadette so um, it was it was a remarkable weekend and Lamoria I don't Lamorla La Morla. Welcome. I don't think you've ever chimed in before. So good to have you here with us. Welcome. So um, this, uh, there were all kinds of events, you know, where there were speakers and, and um, singing circles and all kinds of things. And, and I have to say, and wonderful food and all of that great stuff. For me, it was so much about connecting with people. And it was so interesting to see that there were certain people that kept circling through and the people that I kept, that I got connected with, those connections just kept getting reinforced. Like, I guess, because once you know somebody, you see them more easily, but there were more than 350 people there. And there were people that I didn't, hadn't, seen at all uh 
on the first two days I was there. Lions Gate 88, Jenny. What is that? Jenny says, Happy Lions Gate 88. So um, I guess today must be the 8th of August. Uh, see how slow I am? Okay, so it's the 8th of August, but I don't know what Lions Gate means. So maybe you'll share that with us, Jenny. That would be awesome. Anyway, it was fascinating to me to notice and then to think beyond this event how I understand, I understand it's astrology, but I'm wondering what the, Jenny says it's astrology. Um, I, I'm wondering what the implications of it are. Now you gave me some homework to go find out. Anyway, um, it, Bernadette says that the weekend sounds great and very informative. It truly was. And making wonderful connections with people. Uh, and um, finding supplements, you know, lion's mane is really wonderful. It's a nootropic. It's um, it's wonderful for. Actually, I'm not. I, I get. I believe it's a nootropic, um, but it's wonderful for uh, brain function and and neuro neuroplasticity. I'm going to say anyway it was let's get back to circles of connection because it's funny to me how like the for this foray i um I, we they took us on a bus to a local park where we could or a forest where we could go and and look for the mushrooms and i sat down next to this guy and we started talking and we it turns out that he's a glass blower i had been a glass blower he went to alfred university i went to alfred university he went to tyler art school i i went i took courses at tyler and lived right across the street from it he lived in an area close to where I live, although he doesn't live there now. And so it was, it was really, really bizarre. This was one of the first people that I connected with on my journey in this, you know, over the weekend. And there were all these crazy connections that, that um, kind of blew my mind. And so when we think of like the people that we attract into our lives and how those connections occur, it occurred to me that maybe we are um, in, and this isn't an idea unique to me by any means, but that, that we have our our circles of people with like frequency maybe maybe we could call it that that we um are part of networks that interconnect but that we're we're part of specific networks. I wonder if that's true. You know, I'm just playing with the idea that um, we attract our people and are attracted to our people, even if it's a one-time occurrence. Have you ever had a, a quote unquote chance encounter with somebody that just sort of rocked your world where you had this super intense connection and and it had a lasting impact for on you or or in you it's really really interesting right so um uh, bernadette says funny how the universe just puts the common people in our path to connect with leaving a familiarity for us to find connection of our own existence Yes, so I love that notion that maybe 
you know, it's kind of, we, we've been talking about winks from the universe. You know, this is, this is connecting with these people. You know, there are, maybe it's more of the universe affirming our relationship you know, with the universe and, and with other reflections of ourselves. So Jenny says, I think so by frequency that we attract these people. Yes. Um, I, it, I just find it so fascinating and how um, we're, we're called into other people's lives as well. You know, um, I did. I I had the opportunity to do several sessions with people, and it was so powerful. It was so powerful to be able to be in the right place at the right time for people who really needed. Um, like I, I felt like these people called me in somehow and, and they felt like, wow, they, they had a need that was answered by these sessions. Jenny, I'm right with you with the mushrooms there. Um, anyway, I wonder about this notion of circles of connection and I, and having been, in my life, so feeling most of my life having felt so isolated and alone, um, to to now be growing into a place where I feel like we're reconnecting, almost like those uh, were being drawn together. Um, those of us that of our of are of like mind or similar mind you know that we're being drawn together collectively to to be able to create shift and influence in the world perhaps or maybe something that looks super random is is becomes a pivotal moment and a gift, you know, when when different people show up and just say the right thing in the right moment, or when you have the privilege of being that person that gets to say the right thing in the right moment, to just sort of drop a pebble in the pond for somebody else that then has ripples out into life for them. It's pretty remarkable. Renadette says, I believe we find each other for different reasons, some to love, some to learn from, and some to help us acknowledge a past wound to heal from. And maybe also, Bernadette, maybe even some to allow us to see ourselves in a new light, perhaps. Jenny says, divine. Exactly, exactly. It's like there's this so here I was at a mushroom festival. So mycelium are the is the root structure, for lack of a better description, that is this mycelial network that is the foundation of the communication and and um, exchange of nutrition, not just between mushrooms but other other life forms. Anyway, so there's this maybe humid humid. Oh boy, human mycelial network too, you know, where there's this energetic network that connects us with one another and this greater intelligence. So Jenny says, um, divine, and I agree. I think I said that already. And Bernadette says, a reason, a season, or a moment. Indeed, indeed, absolutely. And, um, you know, all of these levels of interaction are, can be so profound. And Jenny says, divine intervention. Yeah, but, you know, like it also is rather than 
like this notion of external divine intervention. Maybe it's even more an expression of our own divinity in our connection with one another. And um, the exchanges, you know, what if, what if we're all truly one and we're all part of one big organism? What if we are all cells in one greater organism and these cells are, have interchange with each other you know exchanging nutrients exchanging information in their in their life as cells so um it's kind of what if we're all part of this bigger mycelial network that is all connected and interconnected and Bernadette says we are all a fragment of each other. I love it, Bernadette. Yes, yeah, so we're we're all part of this greater whole. Jenny says we are. Yeah, we are. Um, we're all part of this greater whole of of life. So when we talk about we are life, this is one of my hypotheses. Not like it's fact, but. It works for me, maybe, and maybe it works for you, that what if we are life expressing itself, the intelligence of life expressing itself. And so when we have these connections with other people, it's like there are, it's, it's not unlike when we have new neural synapses happening in our own minds, you know, that there are these connections with with other people, with experience, with intelligence, with um, awareness, with learning. So Jenny says, and consciousness. Yes. Ex what if we are, what if that's what we are? Is And all life is, all of life is consciousness and life expressing itself. And we get to learn from all these different dimensions. So Rosalind says our attention goes toward what we focus on. What happens to a person with impaired cognitive function? <coughs> it's interesting, Rosalind, because when we talk about impaired cognitive function, that's measured against a certain standard, but what happens, I imagine, like on a on an objective uh, perspective or from an objective perspective, impaired cognitive function creates a different experience of cognition, right? A different experience of existence. So it's another dimension of existence, you know, uh, and of awareness so given that we were learning and and connecting a lot with mushrooms we were also connecting a lot with nature and um there was a, a quote i think it was from paul stamets who is a, a world-renowned mycologist who um, said something to the effect of just because we don't understand why nature does what nature does or even maybe notice that nature does so much of what nature does doesn't mean that it, it it doesn't have its intelligence. It just means that we're not there yet, right? We're just starting in so many ways to wake up to the brilliance of nature uh, and, and to begin to be understanding some of the complexity and magnificence of so many of the interactions that occur in nature. 
that we never noticed, you know, because we were so busy believing that we were supreme beings on and supreme intelligence. When if you think about it, and this is such a wonderful perspective shift. Plants have been here for millions and millions and millions of years, developing their intelligence, developing their skills of, of propagation and um, life cycles and, and, and animals have been here way longer than humans, right? So you, humans are kind of the new kids on the block and we think that we've got we've got all the smarts but this natural world has all kinds of remarkable exchanges and interplays that we're we're just now starting to become aware of um and and it's really quite remarkable jenny says awakening exactly <clears throat> we are just beginning to notice this remarkable world around us good morning good morning gia so good to have you here joining us this morning and i know it's not morning where you are so um thank you for being here with us jenny says yes i agree it's amazing and then and you know, it is amazing, Jenny, and it's it's beyond it is beyond our ability to hold in so many ways the complexity of relationships that occur within the natural world. There's a there's a woman named Suzanne Simard, I think, who wrote a book called Finding the Mother Tree. And that's just, that's not just metaphorical. There is such a thing as the mother tree. And in the forest, what we're learning is that there are certain trees that are, they're the mother tree. They're communicating, they're feeding their, um, their progeny. Um, they're sending nutrients they're nurturing and nourishing other trees and um when we start looking at forestry and and we look at the um the deeper existence of our forests and and ecosystems there are all kinds of interactions that our practices disrupt on such a profound level we're starting to recognize what the consequences are of some of these activities like when we clear cut a forest or when we harvest the good the good trees quote unquote from the forest and leave the ones that are straggly what's happening is that those are the ones that are going to propagate so it further degrades the forest we don't look at all the interactions between the microbes in the soil and the bacteria even and all the undergrowth and and the insects and the animals and the birds uh, you know like it is a complex system that has evolved over millennia you know like ha has evolved for centuries and centuries and centuries way beyond humans and humans are part of this ecosystem but we don't even recognize our our engagement with it or the levels at which we we feed it and it feeds us you know we've been in so many ways we've been predators you know we've been extractors we've been dissociated from the greater web of it 
So Bernadette says it's like the metaphorical movie Jumanji. The humans underestimate the world outside of the human identity, right? It's like the height of arrogance, right? It reminds me of how uh, of the line in the song. Um, I was so much young, uh, older than I'm younger than that now, which uh, reminds me also that when I was younger, I knew everything, you know, like the arrogance of youth. And as I get older, I know less and less. And um, because there's there's the recognition that there's so much more that we just do not understand or even recognize so jenny says it goes unseen or ignored for money profits and control well so much of our 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 world as humans is really truly compute completely human centered and completely dissociated from the natural world right you know this the the big corporate control and domination thing is very very much disconnected from the natural world and the cycle of life the cycles of life so bernadette says we only know what we're subjected to until we ask questions I think Bernadette, as we, good morning, good morning, Isabel. So good to have you here with us. Welcome, welcome. I think that as we um, ask questions, it enables us to be seeking beyond our boundaries, beyond the boundaries of what we are subjected to or exposed to. And that's that's the power of imagination creativity question is to create new openings for experience that we wouldn't have otherwise been um been privy to it's a way that we expand our perception right by asking questions we're talking about circles of connection bernadette says exactly but we need the exposure first to awaken the questions well you know i'm gonna challenge that bernadette because i think as children you know what do we, what's the phase that kids go through where it's why do this why that's the way it is why right so the questions are part of our nature is is to be wondering why or how or what you know what is that when we're learning language what are we doing we're we're asking questions or we're answering questions and what happens is that native curiosity of of the wide-eyed child gets squelched right a lot of our learning is to learn not to ask questions unfortunately but i think i think that the questions are part of our innate curiosity i really truly do and um and and if we are gifted with the opportunity to be in an environment that stimulates questions, that's even better. That's even better. So circles of connection is kind of what is what we started talking about and how we we draw people, we draw experiences, we draw um patterns you know people that 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 um represent the same kind of thing over and over or 
or sometimes people that expand our horizons or you know people that keep circling that we keep coming in contact with maybe they're part of our soul circle on some level that that you know maybe these deeper deeper connections and interconnections and networks are all part are all existing that we we haven't noticed um, so Jenny says, like, Roundup destroys the soil and GMO food causes illnesses and cancer, but it's still being fed to people. Wonder why? Well, yeah, Jenny, that's profits and control for sure, for sure. And that's a whole other subject. So, um, yeah, I mean, don't get me started. I got to go. <laughs> I got to, yeah, our time for this morning is up, but we get to talk about that. Uh, at some point actually I just was I'm going to wrap up with this in response to what you just mentioned Jenny I was uh, in the mornings I don't know if this is um, helpful for myself or not but in the mornings I um, check out YouTube to see what's happening politically whatever and I found the this um, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse is has been doing a whole series of speeches called the Scheme, the Scheme speech. If you look up the Scheme speeches, uh, Dr., uh, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, really really interesting, talking about the the um intention and and the whole scheme behind the control of the supreme court really very 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 fascinating and saying uh, talking about how that scheme has been implemented with more than 560 million dollars to by corporate interests by billionaire interests to manipulate the court to be supporting the corporate ends of these entities. Really, really fascinating. And um, pretty, pretty interesting the way that he puts it all together. So I encourage you to check it out. It'd be interesting to have a conversation about it. Anyway, um, Bernadette says, Wait, wait, wait. Bernadette says, here's where I'm coming from. I believe our curiosity is always there. But for example, if a child's never seen a star in the sky, maybe due to too much city light, they tend not to ask what a star is. 100% Bernadette. I get what you're saying. Totally right. So there is, yeah, there are there are circumstances that stimulate questions. And if we are in a limited co uh, context, there's a limit to the questions that might emerge. Ooh, excuse me. And so I appreciate your clarification, Bernadette. I agree with you 100%. And Isabel says, I was repressed to not ask as a child. I'm so grateful to these times for two past year, for the past two years mostly, to allow me to feel free to ask questions again without fear. I'm so grateful for my awakening from this uh, from this disturbing concepts I was wrapped around as growing and stayed for a while of my adult life too. So Bernadette, congratulations to be reawakening that that curiosity and willingness of the child to ask questions. That's such a profound gift. And um it is through being able to ask questions. I, I agree too that so many of us are are told not to question. We're taught not to question. Don't question authority. Don't question. Um, you know, this is the truth. Don't question it. Don't look deeper. Uh, so good for you, Isabel. That's tremendous freedom. So uh, Isabel says, wow, I'm going to look for it for sure, the scheme. I, I'm finding it fascinating, really, truly fascinating. And um, anyway, 
So much love to you guys and deep, deep gratitude to have the opportunity to be having these conversations with you and, and to be diving deep into the nature of being together. What a treat, really. What a gift. Um, so uh, I'm Mira Rubin. This is the core connection. And I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page, as well as their U the Enlightened World Network YouTube channel. And you're so, so welcome, Dido. So glad to have you here with us. And Jenny, I appreciate you deeply, deeply and everyone else who's joining us and participates and those of you who are listening and think about these things. Anyway, I encourage you all to check out the other wonderful programming on the Enlightened World Network, Facebook page and YouTube channel, as well as Enlightened World Living, EWN, One with the Earth. And until next time, so, so, so much love and appreciation to you.